The big stuff, obviously, we've got FOMC minutes on Wednesday and NFP, which I scheduled a live session for on Friday. However, there's a bunch of little stuff in between in, you know, in some of those countries in Europe that we don't really pay that much attention to, but there's a bunch of little reports. There was a couple this morning that moved this around a little bit. There's so there's uh, there's a lot, you know, in this environment, it doesn't take much to move us. And um, but obviously, all eyes on FOMC and NFP and FOMC is the minute. So, you know, what was the discussion? It's the, the big, you know, secret conversations. And then obviously, NFP is it's going to set the tone for probably the month. And while we're on that topic, I should note that um this is an unusual year in that we did not have any sort of uh, year-end strength. Um, Santa Claus rally, you know, and historically, the seasonal pattern is really strong. November, December, and January are the strongest months. It's, now, there's a couple of things you can throw into that equation that are interesting right now. You know, clearly, with last year being as down as it was, if people had stuff to sell, you know, doing it for the end of the year is tax advantages in the U.S., and, um, you know, and, and people want to get stuff off their books, start clean. So um, there, there's a reasonable argument for an attempt to rally. Um, we did see, um, and Leo do the the uh, TPO stuff in more depth, I'm sure. But let me just um, bring this over here for a second. Check out this. Uh, this is ES TPO view. And uh, we, we picked off one of the poor week highs that was above us overnight. And there's still another one. There's a single print up there. And we now have three poor week lows below us. Th this low here is really, I've got eyes on that, you know, 3,800 area. That just looks like it wants to get tested clearly. You know, look what happened back here a couple of weeks earlier. And there's some single prints down there. And um, NQ looks, you know, similar. Um, so I, I was saying at the Sunday reopen last night that it just, it's a really target rich environment, but, you know, it could easily go both ways, you know, and explore. And so, you know, don't be committed to levels, but there's definitely some places that are obvious targets for us to go in either direction. So, you know, if you think about that in the context of all this news, quote unquote, with a Z, you know, FMC minutes, NFP, all these other things in the middle, um, this could be a, a, a really busy week. Um, while we're on that topic, we had a really short hedge fund call this morning because a lot of people are in uh, are traveling back today uh, from the Hamptons and whatnot. But um, basically, everybody's locked and loaded. There's, you know, all the institutions are back at their desks. Everybody's ready to trade. Everybody's got cash. Um, nobody got bonuses last year. So um, it's a very interesting environment for the next week or so. Um, you know, earnings coming, all, you know, big in, uh, announcements like NFP. Um, so, you know, lock and load and stay very cool. This is going to be a very interesting ride for, for the near future. That's my take. Um, how's your data coming, Lee? Um, still downloading. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's see, I can bring up the overnight uh, footprint as well, which is interesting. I don't think, did we leave UB at the top? We did not, and we did not leave it at the bottom either. So that's ES. I've got shrink NQ on my other screen, and uh, what do I see there? There's UB, there's old UB, but uh, and there's, yeah, crunched as you be at the low, but I don't know how significant that would be. Um, what else can we talk about? The Interestingly, the strongest looking TPO view, guess what, is RTY again. It's, it's, the, it's the top of its range, and it's got all kinds of artifacts around as well. But, you know, if you compare that to what we're seeing in ES, you know, it, it's a stronger pattern. And, and we've seen that before. You know, it likes to lead. So, again, I... I wouldn't be shocked at all if we had some sort of attempt to rally this week, but I, I wouldn't expect it to get very far other than the targets I already showed um, until we hear, you know, the FOMC minutes and certainly see NFP numbers. So um, that's kind of my broad strokes. Let's see. What else can we talk about? Lee, are you? I'm nearly yeah. there. If you want me to put anything up, I can. Oh, you know what else might be helpful here? Um, I'll bring this over from my other monitor. So. Here's the uh, the dailies, and again, I noted this before. Our, uh, this is why I am YTM is flat and has actually broken its downtrend a few times. RTY, um, you know, if you look at the dailies, isn't as strong as it was on the other one, but it's again flattened out. 
And um, NQ has tried, but it's still right at the lows. And you can see we had a couple of pokes here recently, you know, that a uh, couple of days ago. Let's see, what was that? That was the 12th, um, you know, just poking into an uptrend that it couldn't get going. So, you know, we're in the Fib ambush zone still. We're in a lot of Elliott wave zones. There's yeah, this is clearly could go either way. That's that's my take. And um and I really like the fast momentum we're getting. So I'm basically that that's my story. I'm looking for high momentum to join or fade. That's really what I've been doing. <laughs> and um Yeah, I I was finding that last week. It it wasn't about picking a direction. It was about waiting for a direction and then going for it. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. Um, if, and like I, last week, I was very much trading. I, I was starting to look at stuff sort of during B period, you know, thinking about all the inside out stuff, but just going with the break is in this direction. Let's just load up, go with this direction and then be done with it after about an hour, hour and a half, because we're, we, we've been very low volume. And, you know, as Amy said, we're in the middle of the middle of the middle right now. The range right. is defined, but it, it's hard to know who's going to lead us one way or another right now. Totally agree with that. Another thing, real quickly, on that sort of topic that I was showing people last night. This is interesting. So the blue lines over here on the right that you see are the initial balance. That, you know, they always are on my views. This is Friday's initial balance, and look where we are up here. You know, and we, the reopen is right here. So we we came down, we tested it, and now we're back above it. And you know, again, it's way too early to look at the the SD levels of the VWAP, but we could easily go a long way either direction. Is the short you know the short answer, and we're not pushing any extremes. And when we do go get momentum, you know, look at some of these little runs, like from here, you know, zoom, 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 all the way up there. And then there was a great short. This was right before we started. I was talking about this right at the beginning of the session. And it just shot up there and then it just dropped. And it's just, it's respecting range really well. And that was a really clear LRC test right there too. You can see it. It just went up to the top of the range. It sputtered around for a little bit up there and then it just fell. And so... Um, yeah, I think that's a really good tip. <laughs> um, momentum is really important right now. And um, that's my conclusion. Let's see. Lee, are you ready to take the screen or should I try to get whatever else we need running here? Yeah, I, uh, I actually don't have a 10-day hole in my data now from the 13th to the 23rd. That's nice, cool. isn't it? Um, but <laughs> not much to talk about that we haven't covered. But yeah, I just... Uh, you want to grab it real quick? I was going to say I could yeah. show the calendar for the week for TRG. That might be helpful. Well, uh, that, that, that's quickly walk through. So, you know, here's the dailies all together. Okay. The, the range, I think, on all of them is pretty evident. So, you know, ES, well, anywhere we are now up to 20 ish. The bottom is six. You know, who, who knows? Like you were saying earlier, Jeff, it, it's not about, you know, where we are now. It's going to be edges of the range and the the boundaries are where we want to look for reaction and then take a view of what to do we're just horribly in the middle and you can see that on rty here okay it's heading towards the top of that ym's the same nq strikes me as the big risk nq goes below what 770 760 um we could really tank but is there is there more bad news on tech don't know we have that exact same pattern in NQ and NES where there's that double bottom kind of weak, poor, low, and there's nothing below it. It's a total air pocket. Yeah. So just looking at the TPO on ES. So we have we got to that little baby single print that was there from last week. It was, what, seven, wasn't it, which is there. Did we trade that overnight or did we just? We touched no, we it. We, we got one tick away. Yeah, it's still that, there. That can only be a coincidence, can't it? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, no one's looking at that. It just happens to be coincidental. So, you know, that thing is sitting there saying, you know, let's tease me, tease me. But it's a price rejector overnight at the top. It's a poor low on the profile overnight. That certainly played out projection-wise. That would have been a nice trade if you caught it early and overnight. Oh, hello. Um so the overnight low needs a bit of resolution. We've got another little baby single print down there, 15 three quarters. There's a poor low um, from an overnight session at six and a quarter. We've got interesting levels to be tagged either side of us. Um, the question is, how do we get to them? 
Um, so we've either got to look for, you know, super clear signs within the framework of, you know, inside out, whatever, to say, okay, looks like we might be breaking overnight high, for example, in which case we know what's going to be an awkward spot, that single print. Or if we're breaking the overnight low, we know that there's a poor low to go and resolve. And this is where we can kind of play the stats on one side breaks to our advantage once we know which way we're going, because then we've got the landmarks beyond them. So then you've got to see what happens to the landmarks. It's pointless trying to target something two, three, four levels away because we've got very obvious standout things between us um, and anywhere further. So you, you, it, it really is about being a bit tactical, you know, trade from A to B, get out, see what's happening, see if you can take another leg um, until we break a range. That sounds like a pretty good prescription to me. Mm. There's a little conversation going on in the chat about Lilu's kind yeah. of weak response to uh, what Ep what Apex did. Um, yeah, no response. Well, two hundred fifty dollar one time fee. Yeah, yeah. There, you know. I think based on what Chris has said, there they just don't have the other revenue sources that Apex does. That you know, obviously Apex is leaning on the software indicators and their rooms and all that. So yeah, it's going to be a very interesting quarter in the evaluator space. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, people are going to, well, it, so Lilo and Apex both know their stats about how long people last in front right. of accounts and they've priced accordingly. Yep. And the, the, the key question is going to be, you know, when this all shakes out, you know, of the more aggressive ones, you know, obviously Apex is going to try to be the leader and take up all the market share. And, you know, like you said, Lee, they're just right now, basically it's, it's their sale is, it's going by the way, a few more hours. Um, if you're still looking to do it. Yeah. The um, Apex one, yeah. Yeah. The Apex one is, and um, it's basically cost of goods, you know, that's their cost with rhythmic um, give or take. And so, yeah, why not get, you know, a whole bunch of people in accounts and take it away from everybody else, kind of starve the other ones. It's a smart move. And then probably well, take the on. gamble that people that survive it, they'll actually put into cash accounts and go for a revenue split on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, it, go ahead, JVC. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to add that it's odd to me that Lilu chose to go with a flat one-time fee on all account sizes, because then that means like if you're in a 50K, you're really kind of getting shafted on that yeah. initial cost or a 25, yep. especially my God. Yeah. I, I think that's a play for the big accounts. And, and from Clearly. what I've heard, I don't know if this is true because I've never seen the statistics, but I've heard among the evaluators that the big accounts blow up much faster. Uh huh. Because um, they use the size. They use the size, and it typically people that go straight there don't understand risk management. They yeah, just think they you think know, it's all about point. having a bigger account. Exactly. The ratios are less favorable. Oh, yeah, they're horrible. Totally. Yeah, they're horrible. And yeah, the, the only ratio that really is favorable is you know the twenty five k one to one. <laughs> you know, after yeah. that it goes all downhill from there. I just literally had this conversation with Lee because it's been I haven't done copying in quite some time since early last year, and I'm back doing it again. And so I was kind of reanalyzing the stats on the different sizes and. It's been so long that I had kind of forgotten, like, what do, what do we compare exactly to make sure we're looking at the right thing? I was trying to compare or I was comparing five 50Ks copying versus one 250K and scratching my head going, what? why are we not just trading a 250 with more size? And Lee reminded me, look at the drawdown. I was like, oh, yeah. right. The That's ratio it, yeah. sucks on the 250. But if you do five 50s. You're golden. And you can also, like we were talking about at the beginning of this session, you can turn it on and off when yes. you need it. And the granularity. And yep. Yeah. The, the trick is not to leave them on copying all the time. You you should crank the copies up when you're doing well. It's like any use of size. When when things are going well, you crank your size up. And when it's harder or more volatile, you go smaller. And you know, it just gives you a never another granularity to do that exactly. And yep. I think that's really powerful. I'm I'm running seven of each at the moment, and um, but I'm only copying to three of them right now. So today um yeah they've talked about weekly payouts and somebody asked about bulanox they have a good discount deal the trouble is they you have to get each account to a threshold level before you can copy there and i've got two funded there that i'm, I'm just kind of ignoring because i i want more leverage but that that's the answer alfredo um 
Yeah, exactly, Amy. I totally agree with that. You can you can tiptoe a bunch of twenty fives across the line, you know, making fifty, a hundred bucks a day, and and you know that's real easy to do across a bunch of accounts. You don't have to take a lot of risk to do that. It's just a few ticks. So mm. cool. So what else? Let's see. Do we we haven't covered yet the. Um, the schedule this week, JVC. Do you yeah, want we to haven't talked TRG. Sure, um, it's it, we've got one unusual thing. It's a fairly standard week this week, except for uh, Friday. We're doing NFP, so Jeff will be doing the morning fun there, yeah. and is on the calendar as you can see there. So go yeah. book it if you want to yep. join us for that. And that is going to be a public session, as we often do with the the news events stuff. So if you got friends you want to introduce to TRG or anything like that. It's a perfect chance to do that so they can just join us and everything else is fairly standard. Yeah. New, new month. What's now that? there's one. Oh, new thing. That's right. The right really there. new thing. Gosh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Yes. Um, we've got a completely new thing. Never before done within DRG, which is going to be uh, what are we calling it again? Oh, yes. Dino. D, d, ah, damn it. I did it again. Dino's yeah. Yeah. weekly recap. I just always want to say Dino. Um, well, it is going to be, you know, sit around and listen to tales from the old dinosaur, tell you about his trading glories and nightmares and everything in between, as well as recap. How did the week go? What happened? And, you know, kind of it's the bookend to Ides is kind of how I'm seeing it. Yeah, Ides starts the yeah, week and this will wrap it up. So, yeah, and that should be fun. Try to put the I'm going to try to put the week's events into context, um, you know, like like JVC said, with with stories and whatnot. For example, if I have a losing week, I'll tell you guys, hey, I got crushed this week and here's what I've done before when I've had losing weeks. Here's how I recover. Here's the psychology, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Fireside chatty. Indeed. So that'll be fun. It's going to be a new thing. We're going to try it out this month, see how it goes, get some feedback and all that good stuff. So join us for that. That should be a good time. Um, other than that, yeah, it's a new month, uh, new month, new year, new week, new everything. So we've new got everything. a whole new whole new section of classes starting. So for those of you who maybe are newer to TRG or if you are a guest uh, joining us for IDES today, um, you might want to know about this. We're starting a new round of the structural classes this month. So if you are new to order flow or footprint charts or anything like that. This is the absolutely most ideally perfect time to jump in and start from the top. Of course, we always have the recordings in the library anyway, so you could always catch up if you joined midstream anyhow, but there's nothing better than being there live from the beginning for an entire month's cycle of classes. So they start today talking about getting yourself from charts, basically, uh, you know, standard horizontal candle type charts and reading vertical, reading footprints, reading domes, uh, understanding volume at price and how it is read vertically. And then we're going to talk about the first of our setups, which is the inside out, very much bread and butter structural setup for those who trade more structurally uh, within TRG. And it is a an, a an everyday occurrence. We'll talk about the statistics behind it and why it is so favorable, why it is a, a built in trading edge. So if you have been on the quest for a trading edge, if that's something that you've heard about, maybe you don't aren't sure if you have or don't know how to find. This is a really good one. And it's a really easy one to understand, um, you know, execution of course, is always a challenge. This is what practice is all about, but it's conceptually not a difficult thing to understand. And I think it will, uh, it always, it never fails to blow some minds, put it that way. The first time people are exposed to this, it's like, holy crap, that makes all the sense in the world. Wow. Why didn't I think about this before? So join us for that as well. If you are into that sort of thing, um, everything else standard week, uh, we've got another trading the open tomorrow morning. Um, so if you oh, that's like right. tomorrow's one, yep, yeah, yeah. it is tomorrow. So Please yeah, have been, uh, if you haven't been to a trading the open recently, um, you might want to drop in tomorrow. Um, I've been doing these differently. I'm, um, as opposed to focusing on executing trades, I've been talking about the the best setups I'm seeing. And you know, if I have time to get to it and trade it, great. But if not, um, I and I'm getting good feedback on that. Um, it, it's all it's hard to talk about it and trade it at the same time. But um, but if I can really focus on reading it and just explain what I'm seeing. Um, I think it's more educational. And and um, so join us for that. I think it, um, it we cover everything from the right at the open, which is, you know, the open five all the way through the initial balance. And um, every now and then we get lucky and there's an opening drive kind of event on Wednesday. Not out of the question for tomorrow. You know, don't forget, we've got FOMC minutes later that day. So anything that's going to happen is likely to happen at the open and then it typically gets quiet. So um, So it should be a good session. Join us. 
Yep. And then, uh, you know, there's the standard Wednesday, Wednesday, Darren's Dojo, and uh, then more structural classes on Thursday. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk more tools, another setup, and just start to pad out the playbook and, and get that going. Uh, we've also got our weekly fishing trip on Thursday in B period as well. So if you want to actually see the application of this stuff, you can come join us for that and watch Lee trade the B period setups. And uh, it's always a fun time. And One other uh, quick comment about the schedule. The Friday close should be crazy because we've got every time we have NFP, you know, we always get a crazy pre-market. The day is wild and usually ends up with an off-balance close that that is fun to trade. So don't forget about that. We do the close every Friday as well. What was that, Lee? Yeah, the fishing trips gonna be slightly different. I've been playing with just simple, simple two chart view, literally just TPO and full session. ES footprint with pullback and pullback for pullback and just taking two to three ticks wherever possible on minis and once there's a directional idea just you know building into it using micros typically up to about 10 micros and um, slicing in so we'll be doing that on a really simple point of view on Thursday okay. and I'll do this for the next month or so and we'll see how that resonates no correlation oh. nothing we're just going to trade ES based on the truth of ES. So you know, the volume at price, the whole session, the pullback and the TPO to look at landmarks, nothing else. Simple one monitor trading. So cool. you've ditched the 30 minute, huh? Yeah. Um, all 30, well, TPO is 30 minute. Sure. That's how you've, you're, but I mean, you used to have, you had the TPO and the actual uh, 30 minute footprints. And so yeah, I guess too, you've too many potential yeah. arguments, you know, we just trade off the truth, the pullback and the pullback, the pullback. Cool. And the pullback, the pullback, the pullback, the pullback. Exactly. The pullback. <laughs> Inception trading. Cool. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. All right. I think that wraps it up. Unless there's any last parting words. Not for me. Don't try to make your whole week today. Today, as Amy pointed out a couple of comments back in the chat, today is a really good day to kind of, you know, get your feet wet again. Just let, just watch and get comfortable. And Oh, there's going to be people that try to make their year today. First yeah. trading day of the year. They're going to yeah. blow up their nice, shiny Apex sale evals. Yep. Yep. I'm I've sure got five new evals. I've got five new evals staring at me right now. I got to just remind myself to be very patient. And if yes. I get my setups, great. If I don't, whatever. Next. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's a whole year ahead. Exactly. Yes. Cool. It's, it's, it's easy to get anxious on a day like this, particularly after a really long weekend when, you know, anxious to get back in the saddle. And I, I can't tell you how many times that's been a mistake for me. I am totally, you know, big sitting on hand sign on my desk today. You can't make a mistake today if you sit on your hands. If there's a great setup, take it. But, you know, there's no reason to rush. My wisdom for the day. So, yes, indeed. Okay. Cool. All right, gang, let's leave it there. Uh, have a great day. We will talk to you real soon. We'll see folks for the structural class later this morning. So yeah. good trading. Bye for now.